Hi guys, I wanna talk about melatonin in the pineal gland, okay? A lot of people are taking melatonin for sleep, and what's interesting is that, um, um, yes, it does help sleep, but there's some drawbacks. Number one, the pineal gland inside the brain uh, is an interesting gland because it contains optical tissue, like eye tissue. Um, so it has receptors for light. There's a whole pathway where light enters the eye and it goes through a series of reactions that then end up in the pineal gland right here. So for physicians watching, I'll put down below the technical part of this so you can kind of study this if you're interested. But for everyone else, you don't need to know that. All you need to know is that the light turns off melatonin. Darkness stimulates melatonin. It's an on-off switch, okay? And it's in a feedback loop right here. The problem is that we're so exposed to fluorescent lighting, we don't go outside anymore, so it really throws off the circadian rhythms, the, the rhythms of sleep because we don't get the appropriate melatonin. That's one problem right there. So the pineal is very sensitive to optical tissue. So the pineal has optical tissue and it does receive light. Now, here's the problem. When you take melatonin as a supplement, you're taking a hormone and it may work initially, but what's gonna happen, it's like a thermostat. You're gonna give the pineal the hormones so now it doesn't have to produce any more. So anytime you take a hormone, the gland that makes it stops making it because it doesn't need to anymore. So you're basically making the pineal gland go to sleep. That's the problem with long-term melatonin. I don't recommend taking melatonin because it's a hormone. And a lot of people don't know what they're taking way too much. So you don't want to depend on that. Now, the other problem with the pineal is that it can become calcified, especially as we age. And it has a lot of receptors for calcium and fluoride. So when they do testing, they find that this thing is like filled with fluoride and, cal and, and calcium. And um, fluoride actually makes more soft tissue calcium. It makes spurring calcium deposits in the body if you have too much fluoride, and a calcified pineal gland. So a couple things that you need to do uh, for the pineal. Number one, you wanna make sure that you'd go for regular walks, okay, on a routine basis. You wanna get out there. I know maybe some people go to the gym and work out, but it's really important to go outside in the light and spend some time every day. That's gonna be important, and number two, when you go to bed at night, you know, try not to watch TV until you fall asleep because the light, you want it completely dark to start winding down and stimulating melatonin naturally. That's one thing. Number two, we want to avoid uh, fluoride, okay? In the water, in the tap water, we want to avoid fluoride in the toothpaste, okay? So you want to avoid that and get a toothpaste without fluoride because it can absorb and go into the pineal and create problems for you. The other thing is you want to take vitamin K2. Why? Because vitamin K2 uh, handles soft tissue calcium. So it actually improves the calcification of the pineal. Make sure you take it with D3 together. I'll put some links down below. So that's my two cents on melatonin. So check it out and give me your comments below. Hey, you probably already subscribed, but if you haven't, press this little button down below and I will keep you updated.